All right, so now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in Black Fall, Black River Falls, Wisconsin. It's a uh, 8 17 2021 it's a can't believe what day is today tuesday my bad i'm in a cutaway or what they call an incomplete truck i guess the factory setting says say it does have the air brake jig brake however because the back rear axles don't have any weight on them the jig brake is kind of pointless so i have like a really touchy brake system down there on this cutaway i've noticed where you either have hardly any brakes or all on brakes you know no kind of in the difference so the easiest way to do it is i just drive you know like i was taught with a semi where you see where that bumper of that pickup's going by you try to keep that much distance between you and the next guy and then that way you don't have to hit on the brakes hard because if i do hit on the brakes hard the front end will stop the back end will go like this <laughs> or do whatever it wants because it's light and you know, the vehicle isn't designed I mean, you can drive it down the highway, but it's not really designed this way. It's designed to have a box or a utility bit or something on the back of it. And I've showed you these before. I just wanted to show you the newest one that I'm in lately. This one came with zero miles on it out of the factory in uh, Springfield, Ohio. Literally, they drove it from the assembly line right up the hill. Not even not a very big hill, like as far as Walmart right there in terms of distance. And then hooked the wire onto the odometer. So... Technically speaking, I'm the first official one to drive it with well with the odometer going But I went from zero miles to 602 miles as the thing says um, This is for truck movers and I'm moving it through quality drive away But then they have an account with truck movers and they gave me a fuel card So all the fuel and the DEF is on truck movers. So I just use their fuel card and enter the BOL's uh, truck movers receipt number thing in there for the fuel trip into the gas pump and it pays for the fuel in the def so i don't have to pay that it's uh 17 it they're paying 1747 miles worth it's only 1700 miles even roughly to get from springfield ohio to uh, great falls montana where they're going to put a utility bid or a box on the back of this or whatever they're going to do with it they may even take it to canada or something who knows but anyway that's as far as i gotta take it and that's 1700 miles worth so the 47 mile difference doesn't make not much difference and the the agreement is basically they pay the fuel in the the def and then at the end of the steal i get a thousand forty seven dollars or something and so the other 700 is counted out as fuel and def expense and when i was doing the gas gauge of course these new newer vehicles they have to drive the first 500 or thousand miles to get an accurate count on the gas gauge but so far anyway we're at three quarters of a tank I think it'll show it. Yeah, I'll go through its thing. Well, a little under, little under three quarters of tank now, but at three quarters of tank was 330 miles that I'd gone from Springfield to where I checked. So according to that, I can go about 1,200 miles, roughly, on one tank, which I don't think that's correct, being that they're setting back $700 for the fuel. So we'll see how it goes, you know. I've driven a little more than from where I went and it's already the gauge has already went down to about halfway between three quarters full and half a tank so I'm thinking it's doing its calculations and lying to me essentially but so far it says on the gauge that it's making an average of 15 miles to the gallon and I just don't think this cutaway incomplete truck does that in terms of fuel so we'll have to see by the time we get there but anyway the fuel part of it doesn't really matter so much because I'm not paying for it direct anyway I can just use the fuel card and fill it up which that part's nice, but then the thousand forty-seven is what I'm getting paid for seventeen hundred and forty-seven miles. It says on the sheet about a seven hundred mile difference, give or take. But that's what's going to the fuel. That's actually a pretty good run in terms of what I get to take home out of it. But then if I fly back and just not care about the the plane price as much and go straight to South Bend, Indiana, and then go pick something else up. You know, taking the uh, city bus from South Bend over to Elkhart to pick something else up. All in all, that'd be like between 400 and 500 bucks, and then I would make about 500 to 600 dollar profit, give or take, off of this trip if I were to just fly back. The other option is to take something out of maybe Idaho or something. When I get there, I can get on the load boards and see what's available. Last week they used to have, they had two or three Idaho to uh las vegas runs and i'm hoping something like that pops up again because then if i can especially if i can get that one to vegas it's pretty cheap to fly from vegas back to chicago 
Not to mention I'd have, you know, another decently long run down to Vegas. And I would start to get ahead. Now I'm starting to get ahead with this thousand dollars that I get to play with at the end of this one because I finally got a long run for 1,747 miles off of quality. And they've said technically that if I want to, I can, you know, as long as I fly back, I can immediately take one of the California runs and stuff like that, you know, because I've taken two or three of their short runs already. And I talked to her on the phone about basically ranting and raving about the fact that I'm going in a hole on all these short runs. You know, it doesn't pay to go get it. And I've had to ask for an advance the other day. I had to ask for a $30 advance to pay the lady for the cab to take me from Wilmington, Ohio, where I dropped a box truck off over to this one in Springfield because it was in between paydays. And I had to have something to pay her. And, and then she was on the phone like, you're that broke and doing this? I'm like, yeah. I don't know how anybody can afford to do this after short run after short run. You don't get nothing in terms of profit. You're paying us for the fuel and you're paying us for the transportation back. And that's it. My take-home profit on these short, under 300 miles runs is nothing. So, after I talked to my dispatcher about that, she's like, well, we'll set you up on a couple long runs, so I hope so. Hope something good comes of it. The problem with doing that now is I gotta stick with quality, and that's fine, but now my other companies, which I've been rotating through, obviously, each one I gotta drive once a month for, so I'll end up having to take a short one for them somewhere, either in between it these long runs for quality or after done with quality you know temporarily so I can rotate through them all <clears throat> so but lately Synergy has not had any nice RVs to take any nice runs they just had I just looked at their little board they only had three trucks <laughs> so and then Pinnacle is a good one to run for but like I say quality is right now seems to be the better one the better option to go with at the moment so i'm running the miles while i can the problem with doing that is you you help one company and you kind of screw over the other because you don't have the time to take a run for them but if quality is gonna give me longer runs i have to go with them for my own self you know and then just call them each other company up every now and then and tell them i'm still interested in taking stuff for you i just can't because i'm busy and you know and see how long that runs that last with them but my wife is supposed to take one at one trip a week or one trip a month in order to stay current on their insurance so we'll see but then at one time i was told that if i leave my escrow in there with them the savings account that had a damage deposit account with them and i ever turned the plates in and left it like that i could just leave all winter long and come back next summer and i have a job waiting for me kind of deal as long as i lift the escrow with them so that they can count me as still a contractor underneath their contract, I guess, because I didn't, you know, have the money with them. So, you know, one person tells you you can't do it because of insurance. The other person tells you, oh, yeah, go ahead and leave for six months as long as you do that. So I don't know what to believe. Anyway, uh, yesterday, taking this from Springfield, it did have mud flaps on there. And I put my license plate and dog collar in the middle of the mud flap and made sure it stayed on there. But then somewhere either hit the fuel island when I left there and broke the piece of wood it's just a piece of wood that went across there two by four that held the mud flaps up or else I went through a single lane construction zone and hit it on something there I don't know I didn't feel the bump I didn't hear the noise but then I stopped at a Lowe's and had a, you know went in and had to go to the restroom and came back out 10 minutes later and that's when I noticed it was gone so once again, I lost a plate again. So now I looked into it and called the company and they said, you know, just put it in the back window like that and quit losing the plates. It sounded to me like I'm gonna have to pay another 40 bucks for a license plate. They didn't care too much about the mud flaps. They're, the person I talked to acted like they didn't care, so I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just decided that being that don't have mud flaps on there, technically speaking, it's illegal, but I'm just gonna run it during the day. And then at night, because they would see, couldn't see that I don't have mud flaps. You know, people get up on your ass and they could get a rock in their windshield and then it would be my fault, technically. But during the daytime, you had to be able to see this. It doesn't have mud flaps. You know, and if your dumb ass is going to get right up on me, you know, within a car length of me, like the end of that light line or closer, and you get a rock chip through your windshield, then I would tell the officer, if they got pulled over, that you should write them a, you know, uh, traveling too close citation. Because obviously if they're close enough to get the rock in their windshield, they were not supposed to be on my ass like that. But we'll see. Um, both of the fuel tanks are filled up in the DEF. And I'm hoping, you know, I did the calculations and it says I'll make 1,200 miles on what I put in there already, the $235 worth of two 
diesel fuel tanks in the def. But we will see by the time we get to Montana. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm good to go through the rest of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and part of North Dakota. And then we'll see somewhere in North Dakota I'll have to find their loves. Because that's the thing about the truck movers thing. It only works at loves. So I have to pre-plan my trip and stop at a loves truck stop to refill if I have to. Little things you got to keep in mind, but I like the idea of having a fuel card now. Because now I can take anything out of Springfield or there's another one like in California or something that's got a truck movers thing that I couldn't do before that I can do now because I have the fuel card on me. So that opens up the doors that other drivers don't have available to them until they get the truck card, which they don't do until you actually get on a run like I got that requires it. They don't give you the fuel card until then. So a new window of opportunity in terms of driving these cutaways, these incompletes I call them has opened up for me anyway because I have the fuel card but I just thought I would show you the latest update I'm day two into a four day trip this um, I'm gonna stay in El Eau Claire Wisconsin tonight and the really low quality in and get this video uploaded and then tomorrow I'm gonna try to drive to at least Bismarck North Dakota and then the next day I might pick up a friend of mine to go with me because I've already cleared it to go from Glendive to Great Falls, Montana, if he wants to go, or else I'm just gonna, you know, drive that next, that last day on Friday over to Great Falls and hopefully deliver this on Friday or Saturday morning. If nothing else, I'll get stuck with it until Monday. They don't know; they couldn't get a hold of the people that were delivering this to, so nobody knows. I tried three different phone lines and nobody picked up, so I don't know if anybody exists on the other end of the deal for what they gave me, but. We'll find out when we get there, I guess. And it's one of those that I can leave and put in the key box and hope they pay me someday deals. But, you know, I want that thousand bucks. So I'm probably going to wait until Monday if I end up again with a run like this. The last box truck I had to wait in Wilmington, Ohio. Mostly because I could have dropped it off on Saturday, but then it didn't take up to seven days for them to send the paperwork in. And then my company would be another two or day or a day or something worth before they pay me. And it sounded like a week out at best. And then you'd, I wouldn't have a copy myself if I left the copy of paperwork there. The whole thing sounded bad to me, so I just held out until Monday and went in there and had the guy sign it and immediately got paid. Well, not immediately, but within five hours or something got paid for that run. That's the way I'd much rather do it anyway. This one's the same way where I could deliver on Saturday. But if no one's there on Saturday and I have a 50-50 chance of somebody being there or not, then I guess I'm stuck with it till Monday. Which, you know, whatever. It's not a big deal to be stuck with it for two more days. I'm just not making money. But I'm not, you know, money hungry, chasing money at the moment anyway. So it's not a huge deal. And then the, the other nice thing about these ones is you have the nice bench seat in there that you can sleep on. It's pretty comfortable and you can know it's just barely six foot long so you can sleep in it save yourself the money doing that if you want to but i'm gonna get a hotel room tonight because i'm gonna hang out with a buddy of mine at in eau claire wisconsin before heading out tomorrow this isn't the surprise that i was talking about in the last video the surprise i'm talking about is still coming i thought it would be for this video but it... turns out it wasn't that way so now that happened for like a week. But stay tuned for a week from now. Maybe I'll have something to surprise you with that's outside of work related. Anyway, uh, check out the merchandise below in the description below in my videos. As always, see if you want to buy me something like that. I still have yet to buy a hoodie. I've got to do that. It's on my list. I should do that this week. I'm my own merchandise so I could show you that in the video as I'm showing you everything I drive. This is a pretty good run. I like driving these. The only thing is, there's no weight on the back, so it jumps up and down. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there's an interesting music for you. Like and subscribe, leave comments, check out the merchandise below, and we will catch you on the flip. Peace.